you think you know steak? Unless you've tried this, you don't know steak. This is the king of steaks, and we're gonna make it today. So you know when you're eating a ribeye, that cap that goes around the outside is the most delicious part of the whole steak? This is a ribeye cap. So this is removed from a whole prime rib as they parted it out. Now, once in a while, you can get your hands on these. You can't find them everywhere. I'll put some links in the description of places where I buy them when I need to. This one, literally I was at the butcher shop. He was breaking down a prime rib and I begged him for it and he agreed to sell it to me. But this is the most flavorful piece of meat on the whole cow and pretty tender too. Maybe not as tender as filet mignon, but pretty darn close and way more flavorful. To prep this thing, it's gonna start like any other steak, but it's certainly not gonna end up that way. Just like everything else, we're gonna salt it. Now this is pretty thin, right? So we don't have to salt overnight. We're just gonna salt for a couple of hours. And our rule of thumb here for Morton's kosher salt, which is what I'm using, is about a teaspoon per pound. This whole piece weighs about a pound and a quarter. So I'm literally only putting a little bit over a teaspoon of kosher salt on here. All right, onto the rack it goes. I'm gonna take this to the refrigerator, be back in a couple hours. All right, it's been about two and a half hours and check this out. Look at how the fat is popping. The salt is all gone. It's been absorbed back in. The surface is dried out. So this thing is ready. Let's go get a fire set up. Come here, I'll show you what we're cooking on. This is Mace Windu. Mace is my Toscana wood-fired oven from La Piazza Wood Ovens. Now, this is one of my favorite things to cook on because I do a lot of cooking in the kitchen in ovens, but how much better is an oven that's wood-fired and gets the wood-fired flavor rather than just cooking in the kitchen? So if I get to cook over live fire and I get to taste it, then I do. And this is gonna be an amazing place to prepare our steak. So let's start by setting up a fire. So I've got a couple of these tumbleweed fire starters. I don't really need them because the way that I light this oven is pretty effective, but we'll use them just because we have them. And then I've got hickory here. Just gonna make a little log cabin here to help me get my fire started. I don't need a huge fire here because I only want to cook at about 300 degrees where this thing will get up to upwards of a thousand degrees, but uh, this should be good. Let's get it lit. We will not be hostages to be bartered, Dooku. So we're gonna open up the smokestack about halfway and let this come up to temperature. So we want this to be up at about 300 degrees or less. Normally this thing cooks upwards of 1,000 degrees. So we're gonna to try to control the temperature so that we can replicate cooking in an oven, but with real fire. All right, let's go get that steak ready. We are gonna do a little bit of trimming on here just to square this up. You'll see why in just a second. Don't worry, this is not going to go to waste. That we're gonna call a pitmaster snack. Now, I'm going to roll this up with the thickest side in the middle. I know you've never seen a steak made this way before. And then I'm going to take butcher's twine. Now, this is not like trussing. If you've seen me truss roasts or birds before, I use one long piece. I do this with four pieces for a reason. Again, you're going to see in a second. But we're going to tie up this steak into rolls and those rolls are gonna actually be the steaks that we cook. Now they don't have to be super tight, but we do want them firm. We don't want this thing unrolling. And we're doing a pit master knot. We go over twice. Pull it tight. That's two. We'll leave a little bit of space before the third one. Over twice. Nice and tight. And then our final one. All right, trim the ends. One slice down the middle. Now I have two steaks. Look at that. You know that is gonna be good. You see how shiny these are? That's because of the amount of fat. The fat is literally rending, just sitting here in the sun. So I don't even need a binder. The only other seasoning I'm gonna put on these is pepper. We already did salt when we 
did that quick dry brine. So I'm just gonna put pepper all over here and I'm gonna get a bunch of it on my cutting board. You'll see why in a second. I'm gonna pick up some pepper there and then I'm just gonna roll it onto the side. So I've got flavor everywhere. Now, Nick actually asked me, your cameraman, asked me, Al, why aren't we putting pepper in before we roll it? And the answer is simple, it's just too much. Like that whole surface area, putting the pepper inside and cooking it, it would just be overwhelming. If you really like the flavor of pepper or you're doing another spice that you really like, feel free to do it. But this is about what we want from a coverage and consistency standpoint. All right, let's go uh, check on our fire, see if it's ready for cooking. All right, so our fire has burned to coals, which is where we want it. We're gonna move it over here a little bit, over onto the side, just using the small pizza peel for moving my ashes around. And then I'm gonna put in this device. It's called an andiron. And the andiron allows me to control where the fire is and to keep it over on one side. So now I'm gonna use the shovel that I got from La Piazza to move my coals onto the andiron with the logs going on top. And then with a the heat glove, I'm gonna push this over to the side. All right, what we're gonna do today is a reverse sear, which you've seen me do on smokers, but never in an oven before. So I'm moving this over all the way to the edge. I'm gonna keep it far from the fire. And then we're gonna let that come up to about 115 degrees. I'll be turning it periodically so that the steaks get exposed to the fire. But then when they're done and they get to 115, then we're gonna sear them the rest of the way to medium rare. We are very close here. All right, we're gonna give this just another minute or two, and we're gonna pull those out and let them rest. All right, these are ready to rest. Now, they're not fully cooked yet. We still got more to do. We're gonna let them rest here on this wood, and when you guys see how I'm gonna sear them, you're gonna be so excited. All right, check this out. This beautiful coal bed is perfect for searing. So, you've seen caveman style. This is caveman in a cave. The cave of a wood oven. pretty cool, right? Okay, so the great thing about the way that I rolled these is that the grain is running this way all the way around. So when I cut, I'm gonna be cutting against the grain. Now it's gonna look different than what you're used to seeing in a steak because remember this is rolled up. So we have this really nice crusty outside. And when I cut through inside, you can see that nice pink where some of it is done around the edges, but not crusty. So this is going to be just an absolutely wonderful piece of meat to try. Perfect char on the outside. Look at that on the inside. All right. You guys want this piece? Nick, you want this piece? Cheers. I mean, it's pretty hard not to get that right, but that, I mean, all of that marbling, this is a great piece of meat. And it's amazing cooked in an oven like this. We get the real wood flavor. So listen, thanks to La Piazza for making this possible. I, uh, you guys got to try this. Watch this video next. I think you're really going to like it. And I'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.